What's going on, guys? My name is Josh Selledge, and I am the BJJ Strength Coach. This is episode 10 of the Strength Matrix podcast. In this episode, we're going to be discussing should you lift before or after your jiu-jitsu training? I wouldn't say this is necessarily the most common question I get when I do Q&As on Instagram or when I'm responding to comments or DMs on social media, but this is for sure probably one of the top five questions that I receive most often. And everyone's asking, hey, should I lift before I go to jiu-jitsu or after? Is it bad if I lift after jiu-jitsu on one day, but then two days later I lift before jiu-jitsu? So we're going to cover all of that in today's episode. And we're also going to discuss why using the tips in this episode are going to massively help you roll harder on the mat, lift smarter in the gym, all of which is going to contribute to helping you win more matches and get injured less. And then the last thing we're going to discuss is how you can structure your weekly training to help you not run into recovery and performance issues in the future. Before we dive right into it, I do want to let you guys know that this episode, just like every other single episode, is brought to you by thestrengthmatrix.com, your central hub of sound science-based strength and conditioning training for the jiu-jitsu athlete. At thestrengthmatrix.com, we pride ourselves on being the premier resource for grappling athletes looking to get stronger, be more explosive, improve their conditioning, as well as enhance their overall athletic performance on the mat. As a grappling athlete, for many years, I definitely know and understand what it's like to go online and try to find training for jiu-jitsu. I mean, there's definitely more out there right now. Thank you, Jesus. But back in the day when I was wrestling, there was hardly anything out there. I'd look up wrestling workouts and all I would get would be either bodybuilding workouts or football workouts. Uh, bodybuilding's awesome, and I'm a big fan of bodybuilding, but that's not what's going to actually help me be a better grappling athlete. And likewise, I don't freaking play football, so I don't need a football training program. So the Strength Matrix is here to help take away all the confusion, all the misinformation, and all the BS around training for jiu-jitsu and provide you with sound strength and conditioning coaching, education, and training programs that are guaranteed to help you roll harder on the mat, lift smarter in the gym so you can win more matches and get injured less. And the Strength Matrix is offering listeners of this podcast a free four-week strength program that you can download. All you need to do is just click the link in the description below of this podcast episode. You can submit your email and then that free four-week strength program is going to be delivered to you automatically. Again, it's a free four-week jujitsu strength program from thestrengthmatrix.com. All you got to do is just click the link in the description below this podcast episode. You'll be able to download that program for free, start training, start getting stronger so you can win more matches and get injured less. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. In today's episode, should you lift before or after your jujitsu training? Before we get into all the details of the different things to consider as far as recovery and your training goals and all that stuff, I'll just put it this way. First, do whichever order allows you to get the work done. If you have a little more flexibility on how you order your training for the day, there are a variety of factors that you're going to want to consider when deciding should you lift before or after jujitsu, but I definitely know what it's like to have a crazy busy schedule. Um, We don't need to get into it in this episode, but there have been plenty of times where I would lift first thing in the morning and then I'd go to school, go to work go to jiu-jitsu later in the evening. There are other people I know and other training partners I had who would lift after jiu-jitsu because that was the only time they could lift. They didn't have any other time in the day, at least that worked well with them, for them to lift before their jiu-jitsu training. So they'd do their jiu-jitsu training, say, at 6.30 a.m., and then they would just have that hour, hour and a half window from, say, 8 a.m. to 9 uh, 9 a.m., to do their lifting. So first, before we get too deep into the episode, I do want to preface that all the things that I'm going to list out are secondary to you just getting the work done. If your schedule doesn't allow for you to have the flexibility to choose to lift before or after jujitsu, just lift whenever you can and go to jujitsu whenever you can. Now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about a couple different factors that we need to consider when deciding should we do our strength and conditioning or should we lift before or after jujitsu. First thing we need to consider is the hierarchy of training goals. Now, I am a strength and conditioning coach. I am a enormous meathead and I'm a competitive jujitsu athlete. Given I haven't competed in a long time, 
but hopefully uh, within a couple weeks after this episode is released, that's going to change because I'm actually prepping for a tournament here uh, coming up in a couple weeks. But it's taking all those things into consideration, I need to look at my own training goals. So what are my top priorities when it comes to training? For me, because I am a strength and conditioning coach and I am testing all of these training programs that are uploaded onto the strength matrix. Training for me is very important when it comes to getting my strength and conditioning work in. So I want to make sure that I am prioritizing that in my week. That is a big chunk of my week that I do not budge on. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I am training. It's just there. I never have to schedule it. I never have to plan it because it's always there and it's not going anywhere. At the same time, jujitsu is also a very high priority for me because it's part of my job. I am a strength and conditioning coach and educator, and I run a company that is fully centered around serving the jujitsu community. So it's very important and a high priority for me to train jujitsu and get better at jujitsu. What some what some other athletes may be experiencing is that they are a uh, say they're a power lifter. And they're just doing jujitsu as a hobby. They're not doing it to compete. They're just doing it to dabble in something else while they're between powerlifting meets. Or there is definitely um, a lot of other athletes that I know in jujitsu that they enjoy jujitsu, but they don't take it that seriously. They have kids. They have a family. They uh, go on bike rides with their uh, cyclist buddies on the weekends. And so their training goals are not solely focused on enhancing their jujitsu performance. Likewise, their training goals are also not solely focused on enhancing their prowess or their strength or their conditioning in the gym. So before we decide should you lift before or after jujitsu, clearly identify your training goals and what you want to accomplish. For me, I want to be the best jujitsu athlete that I can possibly be for myself. In order to do that, I need to have very sound and structured, extremely detailed and precise strength and conditioning training and a well thought out plan for my own jujitsu training. So those are my top two training priorities. I'm not training to be a marathon runner. I'm not training to be a power lifter. Everything I do in the gym is to supplement and contribute to my jujitsu training. And my jujitsu training is gonna be the ultimate test on whether or not I'm actually making progress in those goals that I have. So first things first, look at your hierarchy of training goals. Next, we need to look at the hierarchy of your lifestyle goals. One thing that I'll be honest about is when I was a student, in college, um, I was a full-time student working three different jobs and trying to do jujitsu and lift. So my lifestyle did not reflect the priority of me competing as much as possible in jujitsu. While I was in school, my number one priority was to graduate college. And so that often meant that uh, jiu-jitsu training would have to either be skipped altogether or I'd have to go to less jiu-jitsu classes than I normally would have preferred because my lifestyle goals were not lined up with me trying to be the best jiu-jitsu athlete possible. My lifestyle goals were more so lined up with me being able to graduate college. Now, I, with that and while running that freaking crazy schedule, I didn't miss any gym days and I was very disciplined and consistent with getting to the gym. That was something that was my biggest training priority. I understood that like, okay, my current lifestyle right now is modeled around me graduating from college. Jiu-jitsu doesn't, trying to push jiu-jitsu to the max doesn't really match with that lifestyle decision right now, which is totally okay. I recognize that after I graduate college, I'm going to have a lot more time to train and focus a lot more on jujitsu. But for right now, as part of my lifestyle, I need to focus on graduating college. That being said, I can't make jujitsu my number one training goal. So I'm going to make lifting my number one training goal. I'm always going to get to the gym. I'm going to push myself as hard as I can for 90 minutes at the gym. And then I'm going to head to school afterwards. So second thing to look at is your hierarchy of your training goals. And then third, we want to look at the hierarchy of performance goals. So which do you want to perform your absolute best? And we've talked about what your overall training goals are. So are your training goals to get better at strength and conditioning or are your training goals to get better at jujitsu? Are your lifestyle goals? Is your lifestyle goals based around school, work, marriage, family responsibilities, whatever the case may be. And then we also have to look at the hierarchy of your performance goals. Which do you want to ultimately perform at your absolute best in? If you're prepping for a jujitsu competition, 
that should be your number one performance goal. If you're prepping for a powerlifting meet, if you're prepping for a Spartan race, if you're prepping for something else that's not directly related to jujitsu, that is going to take precedence over jujitsu and be your number one performance goal. And then the last thing we need to consider is just your overall training experience and your training history. For someone like myself, I've been this month in June, I really don't know the official date when I did my first workout. I do remember what my first workout was though. It was 50 push-ups and 100 sit-ups. And I've shared this story on a couple different podcasts before, but uh, I remember being a kid and thinking this guy that I went to church with, uh, he was like the cool guy at church and his dad was talking to my dad and he was telling my dad, he's like, yeah, my son, you know, he's playing soccer. He's, he just started working out. He just started doing push-ups and sit-ups in his room every night before bed. And I was like, dang, like, I think that guy's freaking cool. I'm going to do that. And so I did uh, 50 push-ups that night and 100 sit-ups. And that sparked this lifelong journey of strength and conditioning and trying to get stronger, trying to build more muscle, trying to live that jacked and tan lifestyle, as my man Mark Smilly Bell would say. But uh, I say all that to say that I've been training seriously for uh well i've been training i I guess i should i'll put it this way i've been working out for the last 13 years of my life and i've been training seriously and really dedicated to maximizing my performance probably the last 11 years of those 13 years So there's a lot of training experience. There's a long training history. So how I train and how I structure my training is going to be very different than someone that is just now introducing themselves to the gym. Someone that is just now learning what it's like to squat and deadlift and sprint and do box jumps and these other, you know, traditional strength and conditioning movements. That being said, I also have a long grappling training history. I've been doing jujitsu for five and a half years, and I wrestled for four years before that. So I'm coming close to a decade's worth of grappling training. Um, And then I did other martial arts training before I wrestled. So if you want to mix that in there, that's a couple more years of, of martial arts or combat sport training. So I've been training for a long time, and I've developed a lot of experience in both of these realms. And so all that to say how I structure my training and what I consider when deciding, okay, am I going to lift before jujitsu or after jujitsu? Those things are very important. And you should definitely consider those things for yourself as well. If you're brand new at jujitsu and you've never done jujitsu before, that's going to be, that's that type of, the way you would format your training in the gym and on the mat is going to look a little bit different than someone that has a lot more experience. So once you've identified those factors, now you can decide what you want to do. Do you want to lift before or after jujitsu? Using myself as an example, for me personally, I prefer to lift before I go to jujitsu. And here's why. I like to lift really early in the morning. I usually start training around 4 a.m., 4.15. And the thing is, is that there's no jujitsu classes at that early time in the morning. So I might as well just lift. And I just, I freaking love lifting. It's one of my favorite things, if not the most favorite thing I love to do. Um, It's something that's going to be a part of my life forever. And I'm always just going to be at the gym and I always am going to be a meathead and want to lift. So I lift early in the morning. I love to get up early. I like to start my day early. I like to get to the gym when it's still dark outside. I like to leave the gym when it's still dark outside. If there were jujitsu classes that early in the morning, I may move around this order, but because there are no jujitsu classes at 4 a.m., I just go to the gym instead. So when I was lifting in my parents' garage uh, during the uh, during high school, college, and then when I thought I had access to a gym, COVID happened, so then I lost access to a gym for a little while. Um, but while I was training in my parents' garage, I would lift from 4 a.m. to 5.30 a.m. And then I would go to, to I would go to the 6.30 a.m. jiu-jitsu class before school. This is while I was in college. This worked best for my schedule since I didn't have any other times to train. So like I talked about at the start of the episode, do what's going to work best for your schedule. Once I went to school, I started school at around 8.30, 9 a.m., I'd be at school from 8.30 to 9 a.m. all the way to 2 or 3 p.m. I'd coach wrestling from 3 p.m. or 3.30 to 5, 5.30. That was one job I was doing. I was also running my strength and conditioning coaching in education company, Settled Strength. So after wrestling practice, I would spend time working with athletes online or 
creating educational content and all that stuff. And then on the weekends, I was either coaching wrestling tournaments or I was working as part of my internship at Slingshot. So my days were really, really, really full. And if I didn't get my training in first thing in the morning, I, I didn't have any other time to train. By the time all that work stuff was done, most of the jujitsu classes would have been over. And at that point, I, at least for me, I really don't like and I really don't enjoy lifting late at night. I prefer to lift earlier in the day, definitely before lunchtime, but preferably before breakfast. So it was just what was required and what was needed for me to be able to train was I needed to lift at 4 a.m., do jujitsu at 6.30 a.m., and then at that point, all my training was done for the day. Now that I have a little bit more control over my own schedule and I can pick which jujitsu classes I want to go to, I can choose jujitsu in my training schedule based on which training partners are going to be available, um, my own work schedule and how I run my company, which is just a different story, and the lifestyle that I currently live. So right now, I still like to start my day off with lifting because it's one of my favorite things. However, though it originated out of necessity, I really do enjoy lifting that early. So typically, I'll lift and then I come home, shower, eat breakfast, work on a few things, and then about five hours later, I'm hitting up the midday jujitsu class. This gives me plenty of time to recover from my strength and conditioning session and get in a decently sized meal that I can fully digest and get in plenty of fluids, electrolytes, all that stuff so I can rehydrate. When I was lifting at 4 a.m. when I was in college and then going to jujitsu at 6.30 a.m., I usually did both of these sessions fasted. At the time, I didn't really like to eat anything before my morning strength and conditioning sessions, and I didn't mind training fasted. And the reason why I didn't mind training fasted was because I typically ate a very large meal right before I'd go to, I'd go to bed. So it wasn't like I was feeling depleted when I do those early morning workouts. It's just, I just woke up, I just wanna have water, coffee, lift, go to jujitsu shortly thereafter because I definitely don't want to do jujitsu on a full stomach. And then I would eat afterwards around 8 or 8.30 a.m. The other reason why I prefer to lift before jujitsu is because I want to pour it all out on the mat. My training sessions are strategically structured and designed to not beat me so much that I can't perform well at jujitsu. The strength and conditioning sessions that we do within the AM crew, they are intense, they are difficult, they are um, grueling for a lot of visitor athletes that come in and test things out with us but the the regulars of the am crew and the the selected team members that continuously train with us they've all built up a level of fitness and a level of general physical preparedness to handle that style of training within the morning or within those am crew training sessions and then recover enough and then five hours later be able to go to jujitsu completely fine maybe you know if we're doing a uh, hypertrophy phase, maybe there's a little bit of fatigue there because they're doing some higher volume sets. Or maybe if someone really grinded through a max effort lift, they're feeling a little extra fatigued going to jujitsu. But what's great is that once we get to jujitsu for that midday session, we can completely wring out the towel. We can completely push ourselves the way we need to push ourselves and leave it all out on the mat. And then when we're done with that, we have the rest of the day to relax, recover, get some good food in, get lots of sleep, and be ready to do it again the next day. If my goal is to perform my absolute best in every jujitsu session, but I'm destroying myself in every workout before jujitsu, there's no way I can maintain a high level of performance at both within the same day. I'm still training hard in the gym, don't get me wrong, but I'm making sure that the overall training volume, so how many sets and reps we're doing within each workout, and the overall training intensity, how heavy we're going, how close we're getting to a maximum lift or a maximum effort, is not at the point where my jujitsu performance begins to diminish. Once I get to jujitsu, if it's a day where I'm scheduled to train hard, I can squeeze everything out of that last training session and then be done for the day. This is how I prefer to train athletes I know that have to lift after jujitsu. Sometimes it could be a little bit of a detriment to them because they want to go really hard at jujitsu. It's a hard training session planned for jujitsu then they have to go to the gym. And sometimes they're not getting the most that they could out of their strength and conditioning work because they're going into the gym in a fatigued state. Now, someone could make the argument like, well, that's how I feel when I lift before I go to jujitsu. So I'd rather be fresh for jujitsu. And I understand where that's coming from, but I would argue that you could just get in better shape and 
successfully and carefully monitor your training and structure your strength and conditioning work in a way that makes sure that you're still getting in a lot of great high quality strength and conditioning training in before jujitsu, but you're not annihilating yourself. So just to review, I absolutely love lifting early in the morning. I lift five, sometimes six hours later, I go to the midday jujitsu session. During that window that I have between sessions, I'm getting in plenty of food, plenty of water, plenty of electrolytes. So that way I can fully recover and replenish my body to be ready to have a great max effort, high intensity training session at jujitsu later in the day. Then after that, I'm done. If you're someone who has to train after jujitsu, so you got to hit your early morning jujitsu class, and then you have your gym time later on. I would try to be careful and structure your training so that you're not doing a high intensity jujitsu session on the same day as your strength and conditioning work. Your strength and conditioning work should still be carefully managed in the sense that you don't want to do so much strength and conditioning that it's going to take away from your jujitsu training. Another common question I get is how many days a week should I lift? And typically I just answer lift as many days as you can just as long as it doesn't take away from your overall jiu-jitsu training. So if you have to lift after jiu-jitsu, say you train Monday through Friday and you wanna lift three days a week, how I would structure it is I would go uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Those would be lower to moderate intensity jiu-jitsu training days, days where you're focusing on learning a new technique, getting in some extra drilling. Maybe you do one to three hard rounds, but you're not trying to simulate the finals of ADCC. You're, you're, the main purpose is to get in a lot of great technical work and keep the intensity around 60 to 70% of maximum intensity. Then you would shower, get a quick meal in you, do whatever you need to do. Then on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you would go to the gym after jujitsu. Your gym time should still be careful in the sense that like, okay, I just came back from jujitsu. I am going to be a little bit fatigued. I'm not, I'm going to take extra time in my warm up. I'm going to make sure that I'm playing things a little conservative just so I can stay safe while I'm here at the gym and, you know, not injure myself or anything like that. And then on Tuesday and Thursday, I would make those your high intensity jujitsu training sessions, sessions where you make sure you're plenty hydrated going into it. You pick out your training partners and you look across the room and you're like, all right, I'm rolling with that dude. I'm going to try to give that dude all the smoke. I see that guy eyeballing me over there in that corner. He's going to try to give me all the smoke, but I'm game for it. Those are going to be your high intensity jujitsu training days. Then from there, you have Saturday and Sunday as your full rest and recovery days, which uh, I've talked a lot about on this podcast and then some other resources on the strengthmatrix.com about recovery. I would definitely go back and check those out. But that's how I would structure training if you have to, absolutely have to lift after your jujitsu training. If you have the flexibility to choose, I would highly suggest that you do your strength and conditioning work before jujitsu training and then, you know, effectively balance that out. Make sure that you're staying plenty hydrated on the days where you're doing both strength and conditioning and jujitsu. Make sure that you're eating properly. Make sure you're getting in plenty of nutrients to sustain all that training on those days and just tweak things here and there as you need to remember it's not about how much you do in the gym or how much you do on the mat it's about what you can recover from so if you're doing strength and conditioning and jujitsu on the same day but you're having a really hard time recovering you feel like by the end of the week you're constantly just super burnt out and smoked you may need to reassess how you're training. You may need to reassess how many sets and reps you're doing in the gym, how many times or how many hard training rounds you're doing at jujitsu and tweak things a little bit so that you can properly recover from training session to training session, week to week, month to month, year to year. So just to summarize and circle back to the original question, should you lift before or after jujitsu? First of all, do whatever's going to work best with your schedule. If you have to lift before jujitsu, do that. If you have to lift after jujitsu, do that. If you have the flexibility to choose, you need to consider these four things. You need to consider your training goals, your lifestyle goals, your ultimate performance goals, and then factor in your overall training experience, both in the gym and on the mat. And then from there, you can make an educated and informed decision on whether or not it would be best for you to lift before jujitsu or after jujitsu. If you're gonna ask me which one I think is best, I'm gonna lean more on the side that you should lift before jujitsu. Thank you guys so much for listening. My name is Josh Setledge. I am the BJJ Strength Coach, and this is the Strength Matrix Podcast. 
I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I want to let you guys know that this episode, just like every other episode, is brought to you by thestrengthmatrix.com. And if you're a jujitsu athlete and whether you're a hobbyist or you're looking to compete, it's so important that you start getting stronger because getting stronger is the number one thing that you can do when you're not at jujitsu to enhance your overall grappling performance. And the Strength Matrix is offering listeners of this podcast a free four week strength program. All you got to do to download that free four week jujitsu strength program is just click the link in the description below of this podcast, plug in your email, and then it'll get delivered to you automatically. Please share the podcast, leave a five star review, share these episodes with friends, or share on social media. You guys can tag me at Joshua Selage. I would massively appreciate that. And then if you guys have questions about anything we discussed in today, episode. You can just uh, drop a comment on any one of my social media posts. You can uh, shoot me a DM. I get back to everybody on DMs at least the best I can. And, And if I miss it, then just send it again. That way it pops up to the top and I'll be able to help you out. Thank you guys so much for listening and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.